This is a famous magnetic levitation in superconductivity. The black thing down there is a high temperature superconductor, a kind of copper compound, and there is a magnet floating on top. Superconductivity is purely a quantum mechanical effect, originally devised to describe atomic systems, while in this levitation, which is called Meissner's effect, we are talking about a macroscopic quantum phenomena. Indeed, when I put the magnet above the superconductor, I have to exert a considerable force, so the quantum mechanics is really tangible. The high temperature superconductivity, which is definitely one of the highlights in the condensed matter physics in the late 20th century, is really revolutionary in many ways. Before this discovery, we usually thought that superconductivity is related to a weak attraction due to a coupling of electrons with crystal lattice vibrations. In the copper compound, Superconductivity not only occurs at high temperatures, but we are astonished to realize that the superconductivity arises due to a strong Coulomb repulsion between electrons. This is a crystal structure of the copper compound, where supercurrent flows along these layers. While the high temperature superconductivity was discovered back in the 1980s, we have witnessed discoveries of several other classes of materials in these decades. In 2008, we are surprised by the discovery of superconductivity in iron compounds in Japan. Immediately after, we construct one of the first theories for the iron-based superconductivity. A next surprise came from the discovery, again in Japan in 2010, of superconductivity in organic metal, which is a mixture of aromatic molecules and the metallic atoms. Our group also constructed the first theory of this class of organic superconductor. So we are trying to clarify mechanisms of superconductivity, which is a macroscopic manifestation of quantum mechanics in a variety of materials. We also go one step further, aiming at a materials design with which we are predicting what kind of materials and crystal structures we should look for to have unconventional superconductivity with an even higher TC or interesting properties. I'm also very much interested in interdisciplinary interactions between condensed matter physics and high energy physics. I've actually organized an international conference entitled Condensed Matter Physics Meets High Energy Physics, co-chairing with Professor Hiroshi Ogri in Caltech. There, we have discussed a few theoretical aspects and so on. And an example of the topics is a holographic method derived from a gauge gravity correspondence. If such approaches are applicable to condensed matter physics, in non-equilibrium for instance, it will be nice and innovative since we will have a common way of thinking between condensed matter physics and high energy particle physics. Asthmatics is the language we physicists use. However, physics is of course a natural science, so we are constantly having trials and errors by selecting theories from experimental results. So this is going to be a kind of confrontation between mathematical beauty and true theories described in nature. Fortunately, we have a variety of interesting phenomena in condensed matter physics occurring in various materials and realizing various few theories. And I always tell the people in my group to pursue really interesting subjects. Choice of a good subject is about half the total weight of research. As another important factor, I'm encouraging young people to attend international conferences where they can enjoy informal discussions with people from diverse views and various parts of the world. Now, I happen to be a music addict. I always listen to classical music at home, in commuting, and even in my office. I play the piano. Now, I cherish most of the best who seems to commute between the terrestrial and celestial worlds with uncanny ease. And I feel this as a kind of affinity with natural sciences. Science is a human activity, all right, but we constantly ask ourselves how we can float between the nature and the science as a human endeavor to create our own views.